So here's a topo surface, and uh, you can tell here by my primary and secondary lines, I've got quite a lot of variation here. I've got the contour set fairly tight, but uh, I'm doing that just to kind of show uh, detail where we need it. And the intention here is going to be to have modeled elements placed on this topo surface that as much as possible follow the drop and the contours. So again, just to kind of restate what I would mentioned before, um, Revit gives you these kind of rough, crude, sort of faceted, very uh, sort of triangulated looking topo surfaces. You don't get smooth blends between the lines, unfortunately. That will reflect in the modeled elements. So as I drag, for example, handrails and floors and such over these topo surfaces, again, they're not going to be smooth either. They're going to be kind of uh, jagged and faceted. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just go back to the site view and we're actually going to place a handrail on this. And the handrail tool is one that allows you to host an object to another object. Usually that means a handrail hosted to a stair or a ramp, but the handrail can also be hosted to a topple surface and you'll see it kind of following the path uh, of that topple surface. So on the architecture tab, <coughs> circulation panel, we'll click on railing. And uh, we'll do a couple, maybe one that's just a straight line and then one that's got a bit of a curve in it. So I'll do a single line and just place it maybe over here where the drop in contours is a little less drastic. And then I'll just click on the green check to finish that rail. And I'm not worried about the type. By default, it's just going to go to this railing 900 millimeter pipe. That's fine. I'm going to make my own type after anyway. So if I click on the green check, initially it'll disappear. And um, that's because it's placed that handrail right down here at zero. I didn't do anything to modify the settings for where it sat uh, in an elevation sense, so I just put it right down at zero. Uh, in a 3D view, I can now select that handrail or guardrail, and over on the right of my um, ribbon here, if I select pick new host, it will allow me to choose the topo surface, and now you'll see that it changes its slope and follows that drop in contours. So if I go to a sort of left elevation view, you can see here the slope in that handrail now. So we want to leverage that ability to modify and sort of adapt to the host's topography to do things like sidewalks and curbs. Uh, as I said, let's do something maybe a little bit more complex. We've just got our basic sort of straight uh, handrail there. We'll activate the tool again here and uh, use the sketch tools to do something maybe a little more complex. Uh, we'll just use the line tool and um, maybe use the fillet arc to get a bit of a curve in this. So remember on the draw panel, uh, there's a tool here called fillet arc. If we activate that, it allows us to do sort of a rounded corner here on these two lines. So there's my simple sketch for a slightly more complex path for this handrail. And if I click on the green check, as I would expect, just like last time, that hand handrail is going to be kind of buried underneath the top of surface. But I can repeat the steps and just click on the rail, pick new host, and then click on the top of surface. Now, I didn't stick around long enough to really read what that prompt was saying, but uh, it's probably letting me know that there might be some irregularities in the pattern described for the handrail. Uh, that's okay. Like I said, I'm going to just do a new um, type here anyway that's not going to have the balusters and the rails. So before I do that, uh, I'm actually going to create a custom path and I'm going to mimic something that might be like a sidewalk or a curb. And to do that, I'm going to go to File, New, but I'm going to hover over Family this time and I'm going to choose a profile, that, or sorry, a, a, RF, a template file, which is an RFT file uh, that allows me to do a new profile. And I'm just looking for this really simple template, metricprofile.rft. And we used the same tool before when we were doing a custom uh, floor slab edge. So I'll just click open. And it puts me into this two-dimensional environment here where I just have these green dotted uh, crosshairs. And all I want to do is just on the Create tab, use the Line tool. And I'm just going to sketch using the, the line tool on the draw panel here. I'm just going to sketch something that would be a curb. So right from the center where the two green lines meet, I'm just going to draw vertically. And I want a 175 millimeter line 
followed by a line to the right that will be 150 millimeters. I'll then go down 150 and then I'll extend to the right again 150 and then I'll just go down back to the green dotted line and close this off. So the total length is 300 millimeters, the total height is 175 millimeters. And I've just got this larger kind of curved section here. And then this lower part that's 150 millimeters by 25 in height uh, will just be the, the gutter. Um, just to add a little bit more complexity here before I finish off, I'm just going to activate the line tool again. This, allow, this will allow me to see the fillet arc tool. And I'm just going to soften up this little top corner point and give it a radius of 25 millimeters. So I'm going to use this as a profile that will essentially be swept along the path that I drew uh, when I was back there in the RVT file. And that was the path that the rail took across the topo surface, of course. It'll remember that it's tracking across the topo surface and it'll sweep this path along, or this uh, profile along that path. I have to save it here first. So I'm going to click on File, Save As. And remember, all other options will be grayed out because this is only uh, going to be an RFA file or a family file. <coughs> so I'll click on Family. And um, this could be placed in the library, but I'm just going to put it on the desktop here and sort out exactly <coughs> where I want it for my uh, personal files later. But just call this Curb Profile. And once that's done, then you can look for the button over towards the right on the ribbon that says Load into Project. So I'll click Load into Project. And uh, if you have multiple RBT files open, it'll ask you to, con it'll just con want you to confirm which one you want to open. And I'm just going to do the new one that I just created, which is just called Project 1 because I haven't saved it yet. And of course, initially, it's not going to look like anything has changed. Uh, you won't see any evidence that, that you've brought that file in to this RBT file. But what we're going to do is we're going to edit and create a duplicate uh, of this type, this rail type. So select one of the rails and then just click Edit Type. And remember, if I edit the type properties because they're both using this type, or if I set them to both use this type, they would both update. Initially. This one's just going to show the duplicate. So I'll select the straight one. I'll click Edit Type. And I'm going to make a duplicate. And it'll ask me for the name of that. And I'll just call it Curb. And then I have to adjust a few things here. So I want to adjust the rail structure, the baluster placement. And essentially, I'm just going to get rid of the balusters. And then I also have to, maybe I'll do this one first. We want to uncheck Use Top Rail. So start by unchecking the box that says Use Top Rail. We'll then move on to Baluster Placement. We'll just click the Edit button. And my intention here is to just specify that there are no balusters. So in this middle row here, one that's described as number two, just select the baluster family and choose none. And then down below here, we're going to do the same thing for posts. We just want to set all of these so that there's no attempt to show any balusters or posts at all. Once that's done, then we'll click on rail structure. And because this particular uh, original type had a whole bunch of horizontal rails in it, we just want to delete these, all but one. So if you click on six, for example, and just click delete, it'll allow you to just keep clicking delete until you're left with just a single rail in row number one. And here's where we're going to, over on the right, specify that we want to use that new profile that we created. So we'll use the little pull down arrow and then just find, usually it'll come in at the top. So here's our new curb profile. Uh, we can assign a material. Probably best to just find a concrete material for this. And we'll just make this concrete cast in place gray.
And then we can also just assign a new height to it. We want it to be right down basically at zero. So instead of a height at 775, we'll just set that to zero. And then we can click OK. And after all that, we can click OK again and exit out of there. And there's our curb. So let me just change the graphics a little bit so you can see this a little bit more clearly. Uh, but we'll be able to see that we have a curb now that follows the topple surface. Okay, there we go. Now, um, I did this in a fairly simple spot where there really wasn't a lot of variation in the topography. It was a nice kind of even, gentle slope. So I wasn't really asking it to do too much here. Uh, so the results were decent. Uh, you will, if you try to do this in other parts, like maybe this part here where I've got contour lines kind of converging a little bit more closely, you'll notice that it doesn't do a perfect job of this. So to test that out, I'm going to change the type of this rail to my new curb. See how it does? So yeah, there's an example. Um, for the most part, it does well. And maybe for my sort of view from above and my site plan, maybe that'll be good enough but uh, it doesn't do a perfect job. You'll see that here and there you'll get some overlap. Now you could edit that. You could add points to the top of surface and maybe just try to pull them down a little bit so that you didn't get that kind of blending or that overlapping. But uh, again, there are some limitations with this method. So I'll show you another option that you have and this is with uh, floors. And this is a little bit more tedious, involves a little bit more work, but uh, let's just say that I wanted to indicate a sidewalk that was sort of following the direction of this slope. So back in the architecture tab, I'll click on the floor tool and I'll just sketch out with the regular sort of line options here, a floor that, like I said, just kind of runs perpendicular to these contour lines. Maybe something like that. So maybe what I'll do real quick here is just create a different type before I click on the green check mark. I'll make it something that looks like concrete. So I'll click on the default, I'll change the default floor generic 400 to uh, 150 millimeter concrete floor slab. So I'll make a duplicate of that. I'll just say 150 sidewalk. And I will change the material to concrete. And as I said, the thickness, I'll set this to 150. Okay, now I can click on the green check mark and as you might expect, it's gonna disappear. And that's because once again, uh, I didn't make any sort of, or change any settings that would determine where it was set. So it was just gonna go to the default height of zero. So if I click on this, uh, now I can just maybe adjust the offset here and set that up at uh, let's say 5,000 millimeters above level one. Now I can see it over top of my topple surface, but I haven't done anything to edit its sub elements. So it's just going to be a flat floor object. Uh, I'm actually going to move it up just a little bit above 5,000. Maybe I'll make it 5,150. So it now is up above that top 5,000 millimeter level. And as I said, this is kind of a tedious kind of manual approach, but it does give you a little bit more control and there's a nice visual element that goes with it as well. So what I'm going to do now, is just go to a site plan view so I can see the whole thing. I'm going to select the floor and I'm going to use modify sub elements and uh, tools that might not be visible here. Uh, and I want to add a split line. Just a second, I'm going to drag this over a little bit. The limitations of my low resolution projector monitor here. So I want to add a split line. And when I do this, I might find that it's easier without the snaps on. So if you type in SO, uh, it can also be accessed here by going to manage and going to your snaps tool and just maybe temporarily turning those off. Uh, then you might find it's a little easier to kind of get this to do what you want it to do. So I'm using the split line tool And I'm just basically drawing lines where the contour lines exist. 
And this is essentially what's happening when I use the handrail tool this way. Revit's just sort of doing uh, this for me, but essentially it's just creating articulation points wherever there's a change in the height of the topple surface. So I'm just doing my own sort of articulation points here by using this split line tool. And now I've got a floor object that I can edit so that it kind of mimics uh, what's happening with the topple surface. So this is going to be the tedious part. But at least, like I said, uh, there's a visual sort of element to this that makes it uh, maybe a little bit more interactive than just relying on the rail tool method. So I can click on this and then go to modify sub elements. Click on the lines that I want to edit and then just drag them down. And I'll get some warnings as I do this. It'll let me know that there's some irregularities in the volume. That's okay. And like I said, you can do this visually. So at some point you'll be able to actually see how far above the topple surface the lines that you're editing are. So a bit more work, a bit more tedious, but also a little bit more control. So you can see how using this method, you could have avoided some of that overlap that we saw with the uh, handrail method. Okay, I'm not gonna go through every line. I'll keep this uh, demo moving along here. And, um, but you get the idea. This just gives me the option of doing something a little bit more sort of manual, like a little bit more control. And I don't end up with situations like this where I've got some kind of strange overlap occurring there. Uh, I suppose I could actually edit this curb and maybe just give it a little bit more height so that I maybe tried to overcome those overlap situations. I could click on this and then in the rail structure uh, dialog here, I could just tell it that it should always be 25 millimeters above. Now that might correct some of that overlap. So just remember you've got properties that you can play with to uh, try to get at a better result. Uh, I do have a situation now where that's kind of floating a little bit, so that might not be ideal, but uh, test out different numbers to see what works to give you uh, a curb that follows the topple surface a little better. Uh, last method that I'm going to describe is one that you've seen before, uh, which is where if I anticipate, for example, that I have maybe a parking lot or a parking pad down here, I'll do it in the low section. Uh, remember that you can always just isolate parts of the topple surface uh, using the split surface tool. So if I click on split surface <coughs> and select the topple surface that I want to edit, uh, maybe I just want to have, like I said, just a little parking area down below here. And uh, this will handle complex line work as well. So I can use any of these line tools, including fillet arc, if for whatever reason I needed to have a bit of a sort of rounded section here. And when I click on the green check, uh, it's going to give me an isolated topple surface, kind of like that cookie cutter approach. This now has its own independent edit points. So whatever I do here to change those individual control points will not affect the original sort of host topple surface. So if I click on this little one on the inside, I can click edit surface and I get all the control points in there. Uh, maybe I just want to flatten this out. Maybe I want to just select all of these points and set them to a height just a little above the topple surface. So maybe I want to set these to, let's say, 1,000. So some points are above, some points are below. And just a second here, let me find my long lost green check mark on my shortened screen. There we go. Okay, so now, as I said, we've got this hovering topple surface and it's just completely independent of the original. Um, because this is just a two-dimensional surface, you're always gonna have this little bit of a gap between it and the original <coughs> surface. Wow, did everybody hear that? Uh, let me turn that down a little bit. Uh, so now, of course, we've got the situation where we have to cope with the gap. We don't wanna just leave that there. We could attempt to maybe edit the points of the original but perhaps just to simplify this, we might do something like just put a wall around this, just mimicking you know, a curb or a, a retaining wall. So I could go back to the architecture tab and click on the wall tool and maybe just build myself a little 
concrete retaining wall and then just try to draw. Unfortunately, a lot of these tools won't work. I can't pick a point here, so I'd have to just kind of eyeball it or use 2D detail lines and just draw a wall that kind of extended along that. No, oh, I turned off my snaps. That's why this isn't working. So I've got the wall in place and now I could just play with its height so that it was a more appropriately sort of scaled retaining wall for this. I won't go all around to do that, but you get the idea. So I can cope with that gap by just doing something like this retaining wall. And then of course within this, uh, I have the ability to do further edits. So if this did represent a parking pad, uh, I'd have to describe the slopes to the catch basin on this pad, which is not too hard to do. All I have to do is just select that topple surface, use the command to edit it, and then I could just place points in the middle that were below the 1,000 millimeter height that they are, were all originally placed at. So if I just set these to be, let's say, 500, and then I can just make points in the middle, and the contour lines kind of reflect the drop down to that catch basin. So I get some nice sort of isolated editability here with my split topple surface. Um, and that's kind of what you'd want to do if you were mimicking a parking pad or a road or maybe a, a path. Um, along your topple surface. The last thing I do here is I would just change the material. Um, perhaps I want to make this concrete as well. So I'll just click here on the by category to access my library of materials. And now it'll appear differently. So those are three methods that you can use to begin to add modeled elements to your topple surface.